Hello, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes? Yeah. Great. Um, so we are going to talk, Vikash and myself, my name is Alex, we are data scientists. We are going to talk about um, how we, uh, Renmart can uh, fulfill the demand for uh, tissue paper, water, and all the thousands of items that we are selling using uh, many uh, cool stuff, including fractal curves. So um, I, I think that many of you probably have not worked in the past in warehouses and in transport and logistics. So, uh, I'm going to first try to give you an idea of, uh, of what's happening on the ground, what problems you are actually trying to solve, uh, and then um, frame it in a, in a, in a com computer science sort of uh, context, in computer science terms. Um, explain what particular difficulties we are um, facing uh, at Redmart with this problem, and uh, <clears throat> and uh, with Vikash we will present you our our uh, engineering solution. Um, so the the context is what I call the outbound transport chain. So this is everything that happens to to deliver your order once you have placed it on the website and then it, uh, once it starts being processed at our warehouse and, and then uh, by our transport um, team. So um, it starts here with what I call uh, delivery scheduling and this is where our uh, piece of software that we are going to talk about runs. It runs in order to uh, later allow um, the efficient an on-time delivery of all of your items uh, while keeping certain quality metrics and so on. So uh, the delivery scheduling part consists in um, getting the data, the data about all of the orders that you guys have placed, um, then uh, running the data through the VRP solver that Vikash will detail later. And uh, then uh, this VRP solver outputs things that get uh, translated into a road plan, so this is a, 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 a snapshot of our real interface that our routers use to, to adjust, to do some uh, manual adjustments to the road plans when necessary. And those road plans correspond to the, um, to the actual trajectories that uh, the delivery trucks will be taking on the ground. And, uh, and th this physically gets printed out on actually uh, delivery manifests uh, that the, the drivers can also have a look at and that, that are useful for, for ground operations. So this is uh, really the final output of all that process. I mean, well, the final output is what you get in your fridge, but uh, this is what the, uh, the delivery guys get. And uh, well, once, I mean, the timeline of events goes as follows. So once the delivery scheduling has taken place, um, at some point, picking needs to happen. Picking, it means that there is a guy that goes through the warehouse with a little trolley and the boxes that you see, those red boxes that you see, and fills them up with the contents uh, of your order. So it's called picking. Then uh, there is QC. I don't have a, a picture, so I'm putting cartoon characters and other pictures. Uh, the QC just, it's, it's, it's the uh, quality control of some randomized sample of the boxes that have been filled up. Then staging. Staging just means that all of those boxes get stacked up on pallets somewhere in the warehouse. And uh, then the uh, feeder logistics. So the feeder logistics is where uh, those pallets get, lo get loaded on feeder trucks. The feeder trucks are larger trucks that transport several of those pallets. And they get dispatched to intermediate delivery centers that we call cross docks or depots. And, uh, these cro from these cross docks, then you need to unload the trucks. And once you have unloaded the trucks, you need to uh, load them uh, on the vans as per the routes that, we, that were uh, scheduled earlier. Sorry. Uh, so this is the, the cross dock operations from the big truck to the small trucks. Uh, and then uh, there is the last mile bit, which is what uh, we are going to talk about the most, of course, because this is what uh, the uh, VRP solver outputs. It's the routes. That are being um, that are being followed during the de by the delivery guys uh, on their trucks, and uh, so that, that those start all from those uh, cross docks, and uh, then you get your your groceries. But it's not the end of the story. Then there is the uh, reverse logistics part, which consists in returning the boxes to uh, where they, where they come from. Um, 
this, this is the uh, timeline of events, right? But uh, logically, um, the, the uh, way the um, delivery schedule is should happen is that the, um, um, at that point when delivery schedule happen, the, the thing that is being um, thought about, that has been calculated, is the last mile routes based on the constraints that uh, that you have specified, uh, for instance, the, um, the uh, delivery time slot, your address, and also if you have fresh items, things should not stay too long out and things like that. Um, this, this scheduling of the last mile uh, delivery trips has a direct influence on the actual feeder tracks, which feeder tracks the, the, the orders should go on. So um, there may be one feeder, feeder truck that leaves at 1 p.m. and one that leaves at 3 p.m. But if your order uh, is scheduled for delivery at, let's say, 4 p.m., then maybe it cannot go on the 3 p.m. one. So it, the consequence is that it has to go on the 1 p.m. one. So that's, that's a, a made up example. But this uh, delivery scheduling, there's a whole chain of uh, consequences uh, when, we, when we do this, uh, the, this scheduling. And, uh, and so the, the, the VRP solver has to eventually decide also what uh, feeder truck stuff should go on, the order should go on. And this, in, in turn, means that the picking should start at by a certain time and date so, so that the things are ready to be loaded in the feeder truck on time. Right. So all of the, I mean, we are going to mostly talk about uh, the, 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 the bit about the last mile delivery uh, round trips. And uh, the name of, of that uh, game in the academic world is the VRP, the vehicle routing problem. So um, in our case, it's, uh, it's, it's a capacitated uh, vehicle routing pr uh, um, problem because it, each truck has a, a capacity with a heterogeneous fleet because the trucks have different capacities and different capabilities. Uh, the, um, there are service time windows here in this uh, little drawing that I made, the numbers one, two, four, and so on correspond to some uh, imaginary uh, time window. So for instance, you could imagine this is from 2 to 4, this is from 1 to 3, and so on. Um, the, um, the VRP uh, is here is also, I mean, we also have multiple depots. So we, we need to, I mean, uh, maybe there are simplifications to the problem. But uh, overall, we need to decide which from which uh, cross dock, from which depot, a particular order will be served. Um, so that's roughly the, the, the um, academic context of the, of the computer science problem being solved. Um, here, I just made a solution. I didn't made it by hand. I just looked at it. And I, I bet, uh, normally, you, you, don't really, you can't really make it by, by hand because it's an NP-hard problem, the uh, capacitated VRP with time windows and so on. So you need, you need some uh, quite sophisticated technologies to solve it that we guys should be talking about uh, more in details. But, um, you, you see that uh, I tried to make it follow so that um, uh, the, 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 the routes uh, get deliver the things in order of their, uh, their time windows requirements. And here we have a new, a new trick that can happen. Um, the VRP constraint, uh, the, the real hard problem actually, is not the academic side of things, but is the real world side of things. Because there are many uh, extra constraints that are not discussed usually in the, in the uh, academic literature. But uh, for instance, the objective function being optimized by the solver, is it actually a, a good function that will model really the optimal thing to do on the ground? So this is really a function that returns numbers. And those numbers, do they reflect the difficulty and the, the benefits for Redmart and for the customers on the ground? How can we model the capacity of vans? Which I said that the vans have different capacities. You can put more or less stuff in them and so on. How can we model that? It needs to run quickly because the VRP solver makes many iterations, many trials of various uh, combinations of orders and vans. How can we estimate the durations of traveling from one point to the other? How can we account for the traffic uh, predictions, if we can make traffic predictions on these routes? Um, how can we model uh, and reduce the risk overall? There are many risks. There is a risk of damage, risks that stuff that is frozen will unfreeze. Maybe the risk that will be late because this is a central business district at, at peak hour or something like that. How can we estimate uh, the duration of each delivery once we reach the parking spot to go and deliver stuff. So here I'm going to just quickly talk how to estimate the delivery of uh, the duration of deliveries, for instance. Um, 
the first thing is, do we actually have data what the duration of delivery is? No, we don't at the moment, for instance. So how do we do that? We need to find proxy, uh, a proxy that will most closely approximate this information uh, so that um, we have a, the least overestimate of the delivery of each pass, the, the duration of each pass delivery. Uh, here uh, we happen to have the GPS location and the engine signal when the engine of the truck was turned on or off. And um, so we can use the engine signal around the uh, customer signature time to determine when the guy um, maybe was out of his truck. So this is an overestimate. This is an, uh, a be this best guess is an overestimate because maybe the guy had to do something in his truck. Maybe he had to check something on the phone or, or he had to wait a little bit after his delivery because there was a bit of slack time before the next delivery and something like that. But that's the best data we have, so we need to do with it. Um, and that doesn't, I mean, this is uh, not uh, uh, really solving the problem because it's just uh, some observations. But how do we actually build a model of, uh, that will predict future delivery durations for new customers or for deliveries in the same locations, but for which we have never seen such a large volume, for instance, of items. So th this is um, um, uh, a problem that requires some modeling. Also, once we are facing this problem, uh, we can also look at what data to collect. So we can collect new data that will help in the future to uh, solve this problem better. So uh, here we, we are uh, we started collect collecting data with the proximity between the driver and the truck. So that gives us a better idea of how long it takes to make deliveries. Um, the the um, transport, the, the other uh, members of the transport team who will be uh, talking later may touch on it. Um, so there are many uh, other problems. Oh, sorry. There are many other problems uh, that are being solved embedded in the vehicle routing problem. And Vikash, we will now uh, touch about some more of those problems and solutions. Oh, sorry. Yeah, there's this thing. So uh, Alex gave you an overview of the VRP problem and also explained how we are calculating the service duration matrix. So what is the input to our VRP solver? So what we have is a set of locations, a set of orders with locations and the items within those orders and also the time at which they are supposed to be delivered. We also have a list of vehicles, the start and end locations and what, and what time they, they are able to service. The output would be a set of uh, orders which are assigned to these vehicles and a sequence and also some additional statistics that how much time and what distance and etc. takes uh, during that route. Okay, so I mean this is a very standard uh, constraint optimization problem and some constraints are called hard constraints because if these are violated the, the solution is infeasible and hence can't be used. So they are, I mean, the routes must start and end at the location for each vehicle. Uh, each delivery must be served by exactly one route. Uh, they should not exceed the capacity of the van, otherwise it's impossible to fill them up. And also must be done within the time window uh, they're supposed to be. So, uh, I mean, filling a van is, is, is a 3D beam packing problem. It's a NP hard problem within an NP hard problem. So we have to be, the solution has to be really, really fast so that we, because these estimates have to be done on uh, very quickly. So, so what, what we did was we, we had to approximate uh, our capacity. So this is the standard Redmart tote and we pre-calculated for each of the different vehicles how many of this we can fit. And then we calculate an equivalent for each of the deliveries which map to this tote. So this way we get a very good approximate uh, uh, for capacity heuristic. And, and this is actually an overestimate by about 10 to 15 percent, which is actually good because if you're very, very accurate in fitting our vans, there would be exact sequence in which the items need to be placed, and which would be very hard for our delivery reps to actually fill the van. So we need some sort of space so that they're able to work with it. And I mean, each delivery has to be done within its time window, it's known. 
in addition to these hard constraints, uh, once they are satisfied, the solution is feasible, but we can improve upon them. And these are the soft constraints which helps us to work with that. So deliveries must be made uh, within the time window, but it is good that they're made much earlier than the time which they end. Uh, also, we have to take into account how much total time it takes from the crosstalk to crosstalk. And also some driver preferences. I mean, our, our drivers have, uh, they, get, they get used to the location, and they're really, really fast at that location. So we try to model that so that it's easier for them to operate. So what we do is, so let's say if this is a time window, we prefer that the delivery is done uh, like 15, at least 15 minutes before the time window ends. Otherwise, the risk of delay increases exponentially. So, so driving duration. I mean, if you're, if this is a, a sample delivery route, uh, you would start with from uh, location A, travel to uh, service the uh, uh, at location A, and then travel to location C, service location C, and then travel to location B. So, uh, so in addition to the travel time, the entire delivery time, uh, it's, a, it's a soft constraint. So this is an example of a uh, travel time matrix, which, which is an input to the solver. OK, so how do we uh, restrict our routes to work so that they work based on our I mean, previous experience of our drivers working in a particular area? So we have these small polygons. And uh, what we do is we, we create a, a graph of adjacent polygons and then use an algorithm called point and polygon algor uh, to find out what are the deliveries within each polygons. And then if an adjacent delivery is away from the adjacent polygon, you have an additional cost on that. Also, we prefer that the routes are geographically compact and close to each other. So how do we do it? So what we do is, this is called a space filling curve. And for each of the deliveries, we create an index on this curve. And those deliveries which are closer to each other would, be, would have a closer index. So if you sort them linearly, you would get deliveries which are closer to each other. And then based on a capacity heuristic, which we discussed before, we would fill our vans and create an initial solution. So this is just an initial solution. And it may not be feasible. So we have to run a search on top of this initial solution. So what we basically use is a class of algorithms called meta heuristics, where during the solving phase, the, uh, the algorithm can accept a solution which is worse than the previously best known solution in order to escape it's called local minima. So we had the initial solution, which we discussed in the early slide. And then we would create multiple candidate solutions uh, from this initial solution, evaluate the objective function, uh, choose the best and keep on doing this until we hit a termination criteria. So how do we create multiple candidate solutions? So what, you, what we do is uh, we do certain kind of moves. For example, if this the, these are two trucks, we would try to exchange a drop from one truck to other, and then recalculate our objective function. So this is called a change move. Other type of move is called swap where we swap two deliveries between two trucks, and then again recalculate the objective function, or something called a tail chain swap, where within the truck, we swap the index or the position of the deliveries so that we get a much better route. So also, I mean, these problems can have a really huge search space. So what we try to do is, is to reduce the search space so that it, it, is, it becomes faster for us to converge. So to reduce that, we use something called a, a, a random distribution to select which deliveries to either exchange or swap or do a tail chain swap. So what we do is something called, so nearby, either they should be either nearby uh, look, uh, based on the coordinates or nearby polygon. 
uh, which we discussed earlier. So for example, it, does, it makes more sense to swap A with E rather than A with Z. So we're just trying to reduce the search space. So we use something called a parabolic distribution where the closer you are, the, you're more likely to be chosen for these kind of moves. And also, uh, when do you terminate? So, so right now we have a hard limit of five minutes or number of rounds without improvements. So if you're not able to improve the solution for the next 200 rounds, it's better to terminate. So even, even if we are using meta heuristic, uh, which are good at escaping local minima, we could still get stuck at local minima. So what is the best way to escape them? So what we are doing uh, right now is we run, instead of one search, we run 16 parallel searches at the same time. And for each round, there are 2,000 candidate solutions being evaluated. So for each round, we are evaluating 32,000 candidate solutions before we reach our termination criteria. That's it. Thanks.